This is AutoLine Daily, the show dedicated to enthusiasts of the global automotive industry. UAW President Sean Fain says that bargaining at the Detroit 3 is going too slow, so he's now calling on local leaders across the country to issue a strike authorization vote ASAP. This is basically a way for members to show their willingness or lack thereof to strike. There's roughly 150,000 UAW workers at the Detroit 3, and the UAW hopes to have the results of the vote by the end of the day on Thursday, August 24th. Fain says this will be, quote, a demonstration of our strength. It's a sign of our unity, a statement about our resolve, and that he looks forward to getting into a fight with all of you. But Fain is going to need a much better response than the UAW got when he was elected president earlier this year. The UAW sent out over a million ballots, but only about 15% voted, or a little more than 141,000 people. However, it would also be interesting to know how many of those 150,000 Detroit 3 UAW members were part of that UAW presidential vote. But anyway, strap in, there's bound to be some fireworks coming. Battery makers are making progress on improving the efficiency of LFP, or lithium iron phosphate batteries. While NMC or nickel manganese cobalt offer more range and energy density, LFP batteries are considered more durable, safer, and sustainable, and they're cheaper to make. That's why the industry is so interested in them. And over in China, the number one EV battery maker in the world, CATL, says it developed a fast charging LFP battery that can run nearly 250 miles or 400 kilometers on a 10 minute charge. CATL will begin mass producing the battery by the end of the year and it will show up in vehicles starting in the first quarter of 2024. But it didn't say which vehicles. Meanwhile, back in the States, EV battery startup Our Next Energy, which is based in Novi, Michigan, has developed what it describes as a, quote, significant milestone in LFP battery technology. It says its Ares 2 battery pack is now within 6% of NMC batteries in terms of range and mass. The battery can provide more than 350 miles of range, and it's 25% cheaper than an NMC pack. Our next energy will start producing the LFP battery at the end of next year, and it will show up in vehicles starting in 2025. And in other battery news, General Motors invested $60 million into a California-based startup called Mitrachem. The two companies will develop advanced iron-based cathode active materials for GM's Altium platform. Mitrachem has created an AI-powered platform to test cathode designs that helps accelerate development and bring new battery cell formulas to the market faster. GM says the partnership will also support its U.S.-based supply chain. At Schaeffler, we pioneer motion. Electrifying mobility, manufacturing smarter, reducing CO2 emissions, making energy production clean. Scheffler pioneers motion to advance how the world moves. People say they want cheaper cars, but one of the most affordable vehicles on the market is going away because nobody bought it. Automotive News reports that Mitsubishi will stop selling the Mirage in the U.S. market once production ends in 2025 and there won't be a replacement. And Mitsubishi plans to leave the sedan market altogether. The Mirage starts at just over $17,000 including destination charges in the U.S. and Cox Automotive says it was the only model under 20 grand sold in the U.S. market in July. But it was already dropped from its lineup in Japan, and last year in the U.S., just under 16,000 were sold, which was down 31% from the year before, and sales are down another 44% in the first half of this year. 
GM is finally getting out of the Indian market. It stopped selling cars there in 2017, and now Hyundai is buying its remaining manufacturing plant. Hyundai will upgrade the facility and plans to start building models, which will eventually include Hyundai and Kia EVs by 2025. GM made as many as 130,000 vehicles a year at that plant, but Hyundai's upgrades will increase that to roughly 200,000 vehicles, which will bring its total manufacturing footprint in India to a million units. Part of the Hyundai Group's EV expansion plan also includes PBVs, or purpose-built vehicles like trucks and buses. And India has just approved a plan that will invest $7 billion dollars to deploy more electric buses and build up a charging infrastructure. 10,000 electric buses will be put into operations in cities across India over the next 10 years, with the possibility to bump that up to 50,000 buses. And we think Hyundai is eyeing a slice of that market with its PBVs. Despite a population of over 1.4 billion people, India's new car market really isn't that big, but it's starting to change which is why we're seeing more automotive-related action in the country. The Cadillac Escalatic just made its debut, but we're getting our first look at another Altium-based Cadillac EV that I think is even more important to the company. This is the Optic, or basically Cadillac's version of the Blazer EV, which is a Mach-E or Model Y size crossover. The Optic is expected to go into production in China before the end of the year. It will be offered in both front and all-wheel drive and will feature battery packs supplied by CATL and SAIC. The all-wheel drive version combines for 211 kilowatts or 282 horsepower. But that's about all the info we have for now. Ford is going to show off a brand new mid-engine Mustang this Thursday. According to Ford Authority, it will not be built off the same platform as the new coupe and convertible, but instead will be a Mustang branded vehicle that's made by Canadian company Multimatic, which also makes the Ford GT. From Mach-E to all its new racing efforts, Ford is stretching the Mustang name further than it's ever been before. This week we've been showing you how the top automakers in the world stack up against each other based on their financial performance in the first half of the year. We already showed you how they rank in terms of who sells the most vehicles and by which automaker generates the most revenue per car sold. Now, let's look at profits. Net profit is an important measure, but it can be affected by financial charges and write-offs and that doesn't really reveal the financial efficiencies of how well a company ran its operations. That's why Wall Street analysts pay a lot more attention to the operating profit, and on that basis, Stellantis was number one in the world with $15.5 billion. Toyota and VW were in second and third place, then comes Mercedes, and it's surprising to see that the Hyundai Group outperformed BMW. Not by much, but impressive nonetheless. GM was in 7th place, followed by Tesla in 8th and Ford in 9th. And then Honda and Nissan are at the bottom of the list. That brings us to the end of today's show. Thanks for tuning in. Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone, solutions for your journey. Intrepid Control Systems, over-the-air engineering, boost your game. Scheffler, we pioneer motion. And by Tajin Automotive Technologies, the formula for better mobility. At Tajin Automotive Technologies, we combine world-class composite materials expertise with cutting-edge designs. Because frankly, there are better ways to lightweight vehicles. So lighten up with Tajin Automotive Technologies, the formula for better mobility. We want to know what drives your testing. OTA, connected car, diagnostics, remote testing. Intrepid Control Systems is here to help you work from anywhere. Intrepid Control Systems, driven by your data.